G'day guys, here we are, back again on another Sunday night, having a yarn to you, few you guys, and of course there are already a few on already, um, as long as everyone can hear everything loud and clear, what's going on here tonight, that'd be great, but geez, a few on already, Dan, Patrick and Dean, Jack and Jim, good on you guys, thanks very much there, coming right, Leroy, how are you guys all going, but um, I'm sure someone's going to drop in very shortly, and uh, let me know and make sure this is all coming through loud and clear. Oh, Biggles has let me know. Good on you guys. Thanks very much. Greatly appreciate that. Righto. Tonight's topic. Now, yeah, this is um, this is one that rolls around on social media a lot. All right. Now, it's not really a topic on social media. It's a question that gets asked a fair whack around social around social media. Some of the social media platforms that I see going on. So I thought. Let's have a chat about this, I reckon, because I reckon it's going to be a pretty pretty good little topic and it'll be great to hear what you guys think as this goes forward. So what is this going to be about? So just sort of get started, what's your full drive off-road driving experience like as one? And two, how well do you actually do you guys actually know the capability of your full drive and what it can do? So that's the second one. And maybe the third one, so what's more important when it comes to driving up a full drive track or going down a full drive track? What's more important, the full drive or the pilot behind the steering wheel is to drive in that full drive? What's more important? Or maybe it's both. I don't know. Well, actually, I do know. But uh, this is what we will chat as we go forward. But So that's what we're going to have a chat about tonight. What is more important when it comes to driving up and down full drive tracks, either the driver or the full drive? Let's have a go at, go at this because, as I say, this comes around a lot. So, and I get asked, and I get asked a lot of people send me messages about this as well. So, just give you an example, all right? What what goes on with the to get this going with the questions that roll around a lot on social media now? Someone will put a question up, you know, on one of these social media platforms, and they will be asking a question as, and nine times out of ten, the tracks that they want to drive is either Blue Rag or Billy Goat Bluff Track out of Dargo or both. It's amazing how many times this question turn up and it's about one of those tracks or both of them. Look, I can understand, you know, they're great tracks, but so people ask those, those, those questions, you know, I want to go and drive Billy Goats, for example, there for the very first time. I haven't driven it before. This is my full drive setup. This is what it's got, you know, it's got, you know, all-terrain tyres, mud-terrain tyres or whatever or, you know, a couple of inches of lift. I've got a winch on it. It might have lockers and it might not have lockers and a few other bits and pieces. Um, and then people, and then they'll say, so will that full drive, will, will my setup get me up Billy Goats and, or up Blue Rags? And I think myself straight away, well, I think there's a bit more to it than this. And I start reading all the comments. And all the comments start flowing through when they read, you know, the the what this person's written about their full drive setup. They they think, oh, yeah, no worries, you'll be right, you'll get up there, a piece of cake, up and down there, no dramas at all with that sort of a setup. And there's certainly a lot more to it than than just the full drive. And um, so with those couple of tracks, it's it's all about the full drive as far as what they're concerned. No one ever asks about. Okay, well, what's your full driving experience? Now, these are guys that are asking for the very first one to drive your track. So they might have very limited off-road driving experience to begin with, but it's great that, you know, that's it's the thing. It's great that these people are asking the questions about, you know, how they think they're going to go up those tracks. But they also need to ask them, themselves one very important question is, what sort of off-road driving experience do I have and, and how am I going to handle steep country? Because they're all very, very steep tracks. And both of those. And so how are you going to handle that sort of tracks in steep country? Have you driven much of that sort of stuff before? So the comments go on, you know, about, you know, your, your full drive set up, no worries. You know, you're going to get up there easy. But the thing with a full drive, they don't drive by himself, all right? They don't just get up, up. Um, let's, let's just keep talking about blue, Billy Goats for, for now because it's a long, steep track, great track, but, We'll just keep on that one for now because it's a great example to use. But your full drive is not going to drive up there by itself. You know, it, it needs a pilot. So just take this, for example, right? Here's an example for you, right? I'm sitting it now at the bottom of Billy Goats, just going by all those replies that come through when these people ask me the questions. I've just rolled me patrol into the bottom of Billy Goat Bluff Track, about to start it, and this is what goes on, right? So I don't know whether you guys can still hear me or not. I'm assuming you probably can. 
So I'm just going to sit back now. I'm going to throw my feet up on the dash. I'm going to tuck my hands behind my head because, you know, there's no no worries about you know, my driving experience. Who gives a rip about that? It's all about the full drive. So anyway, off you go patrol. Just take me out Billy Gates and I'm going to just sit back and enjoy the ride. Well, you know what? It's not like that. It is far from like that. It's, there's a lot of experiences needed behind the wheel as to what goes on when you're driving full drive tracks. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't necessarily matter how capable and how set up your full drive is. The person behind the drive behind the wheel is the one that's going to have to pick the right lines, um, you know, pick your, your right tire pressures, all that sort of stuff. So in the day, your full drive is going to go where you put it. Um, it doesn't drive by itself. You know, these things aren't on autopilot. You know, you've got, you've got to pick the right lines to get up those tracks. And this is why I always ask these questions. And sometimes I'll even send these people a personal message, you now a direct message, and talk to them offline just to get them away from all the crap that they're getting about. Yeah, mate, you'll be right. No worries. Get up there. And I always ask them straight out, you know, when about their posts that they've put up on, on the social media pages to – what is your off-road driving experience like? And nine times out of ten, they also come back and say it's very limited. And this is where, you know, you need to be really careful about what sort of advice you give out to people about, you know, about driving tracks like this. Like I had a guy just recently, he sent me a PM message from Queensland and he wants to come down from Queensland next year, all going well, and he wants to do, yep, the two tracks were in question. He wants to come to Dargo and a few other areas he wants to go into, but the two tracks in question, he wants to do Blue Rag and Billy Goat. And straight away, coming down here for the very first time, so I ask him the usual question I always do, so what's your off-road driving experience like? And he replied back by saying he's he called himself very experienced and he says he's done a lot of full driving, you know, around Fraser Island, Morton Island, Simpson Desert, all that sort of stuff, and, and I thought, well, if you're coming down here for the high country, that's great. You've done all that. He reckons he's done it 10 odd years around that sort of area. Um, to come down here from driving those areas, you're pretty much going to be a novice because there's no steep, you know, rocky, you know, tracks up in Fraser Island or, you know, Simpson Desert or any of those places you can compare remotely to the Victorian high country. So I sort of had a really good chat with this guy and he greatly appreciated the feedback, you know, that I that I gave him. But I get quite a few of these sort of comments, you know, people ask me directly for that sort of stuff as well. So what do you guys think? Is it the full drive or is it the um, is it the driver? In my view, in my view, it's both. You know, you can't beat a good combination between <coughs> the off-road driving experience of a, of a person behind the wheel and the also the, the vehicle setup that they're driving. Now, you know, take my patrol for example. I've been driving. Well, I've been driving Victorian High Country for close on twenty years, but I've been driving that patrol that's sitting out in my garage for twelve years. I've had it since brand new, and I know that thing like the back of my hand. So I know exactly the capabilities what that thing can do, and I know what capabilities I've got as to you know what I'm also capable of doing in that vehicle. And when you combine those two together. Um, it makes for a very, very, you know, safe combination when you're starting to talk about driving these particular tracks. And the only way you're going to get this is, yeah, you just got to get out there and drive and drive and drive as many times as you can. And <clears throat> and same with these people, you know, talking about coming down here for the first time. You know, I've, my advice is that they don't do it by themselves. One guy who asked me only just recently was talking about doing it on his own, and I didn't think driving Billy Goat on your own for the very first time, particularly when you haven't been down here before, was such a good idea either. And, again, his vehicle was very well set up, but he didn't have the off-road driving experience. So certainly got him thinking twice about it. So what are you guys <clears throat> thinking about some of this stuff? It would be really good, yeah, high country um Driver education before drive accessories. Look, absolutely. Um, look again. You know, look at my my GU. You know, it's extremely capable off road vehicle. It's front rear really locked. It's got reduction gears and all that sort of stuff. And but you know, but you could chuck someone in it that's very very inexperienced. You can put them in that, and that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to drive up uh, Billy Goat and Blue Rag like a piece of cake. They could end up getting themselves into some serious trouble through that because just picking wrong lines and all that sort of thing, especially when you're talking front lockers in. If you haven't driven a vehicle with front lockers before, 
they can get you all sorts of trouble, particularly in, in rocky, ledgy sort of tracks. Um, front lockers are an absolute nightmare if, if you're not used to driving on them because they can kick you sideways and all sorts of stuff. So got to be really, really careful when it comes to this sort of stuff. So what's some of the... <clears throat> One of our first tracks we we took on was Billy Gates. I drove up, the missus drove down, um, scared, <laughs> scares the hell out of you, but awesome learning experience coming across a vehicle the opposite way. Yeah, it makes you wake up. Absolutely there, Cam, but um, yeah, and look, and that's great that you guys had a great experience and you've had, had a go at it and you got up and down there, no worries, but I suppose where I'm more going with it's the feedback that a people are giving um giving these people that are sort of doing the right thing, they're asking the question about, you know, what do you think my vehicle's capable of doing? And and everyone's just saying, yeah, yeah mate, you'll be no worries. You'll get up there, piece of cake. And another good good example here too, and this one came up a good few years ago. Again, Billy Goat Bluff Track was the track in question where someone was asking about, you know, would my vehicle get up there? He listed all the modifications on his vehicle. Yep, no worries. you get up there, piece of cake. Well, one guy had, had replied back saying, and this is the time when Ruthie was driving around a lot in Old Milo, which Old Milo we know now is sitting in a car museum in South Australia. But, but back then, Ruthie was driving around Old Milo and he'd done a lot in the high country. And this guy had made mention that, um, you know, he'd seen Ruthie drive up, up Blue Rag in Old, old Milo and thinking, or up Billy Goat in Old Milo. And, th- and he said, well, if Old Milo can go up there, anyone can get up there. And and I thought, now hang, hang about here again. One, Milo's front and rear locked for a start, so very, very capable vehicle for its age. You know, good old vehicle, but very, very capable thing. But the big thing is you got a guy behind the wheel being Ruthie who's got a truckload of off-road experience that knows how to drive that and knows it like the back of his hand and knows what lines to pick and all that sort of stuff. So, it's, again, you know, he was just saying, oh, because old Milo gets up there. Anyone get up, get up there? Well, no, not the case at all. It really comes down to both combinations and both of you knowing, you know, one, knowing your own own capabilities and your own limitations and, and knowing your vehicle's limitations is equally as important. That is for sure. Um, Kyle, how you going, mate? Um, start small and work up hard. Yeah, absolutely start small. and But by starting small, you know, you get to also to, you know, to know your your capabilities, how, how you drive your vehicle and picking lines, but you also get to know what your vehicle can do and get a good feel out of your own vehicle. So, you know, there's certainly some good things there, Longy. Um, so easy to get yourself into strife in the high country. Absolutely nothing worse than uh, having having to run a winch out by yourself on a steep hill lift. That's certainly not not ideal at all. But, yeah, look, you can very easily get yourself into trouble. And, you know, and uh, look, Billy Gates is one of those tracks that, you know, I, I – find it you know quite it's a great drive a great track to drive but i also find it quite easy to drive too but i I love driving it too and you know you might think that's maybe a little bit arrogant in saying that in when when someone says it's quite easy but again like i get back to i I know my capabilities i know my full drive capabilities and 90 percent of my full driving time has been driving victorian high country and i've driven billy goats more times than i've nearly had meat pies which is getting pretty pretty close but but, you know, but that's just where it, where it all comes down to. Anthony, uh, I remember joining a full drive club as a lot of, uh, a lot of them require you to do off-road. Yeah, they do require you to do an off-road course before you go on any trips, yep. Yeah. That way at least you have some uh, some basics. Yeah, they do. Full drive clubs do require, you know, you've got to get through a full driving course before you can go on any of their trips, which is certainly a good thing. And I recommend anybody, you know, if you're not going to, if, even if you're not looking to join a club, uh, if you're starting out, go and do some sort of full driving course. And our full drive Vic, I know, do some really, really good courses. I've done a couple of them over the years and do really, really good courses. And you do them in your full drive, you'll be driving with a licensed instructor sitting beside you, talking you through the the um, scenario you're going to go through. So, yeah, full drive courses are certainly highly recommended. There's no doubt about that. There are heaps of full drive tracks that come up, but that, that come a gutter in the Vic High Country that, uh, that have heaps of accessories, but, yeah, Absolutely, mate. Yep, there's plenty of those high, high country, mate. <clears throat> um, yeah, it, uh, you know you can see some pretty pretty modified vehicles that come come uh, unstuck, but unfortunately the person behind the wheel is a little bit inexperienced and hasn't picked right lines and ends up rolling over or whatever and causing all sorts of havoc. So yeah, not not good at all. Uh, Jim, for novice drivers, it's worth joining a four drive club. Yeah, look, absolutely, get into your four drive clubs and that sort of stuff. If if you're a little bit unsure and you don't want to go out with other people, 
get into that sort of line is certainly a good thing to do, that's for sure. Glenn, uh, wouldn't hurt to have a full drive driving course as part of, your, part of a purchase. Yeah, they handle very differently, even in suburban roads. Look, yeah, they, they do, mate. Um, yeah, you, you can't you – know, very, very valuable um, experience to go out and do some sort of a driver training course in your full drive and get a bit of an understanding about how it works and how it feels. No doubt about that. Uh, Glenn, uh, not behind the wheel determines the outcome. <laughs> yeah, spot on. You know, but but again, no, no one is – like everyone here, look, it's great everyone's getting on here and, you know, and mentioning about the driver experience is, is so more important than the vehicle, but – Oh my God! You know when they when these questions come up on on social media about oh you know I want to go and do these tracks and this is my vehicle set up and will and that's what they end up saying you know will will that vehicle get up those particular tracks and and it just lights up mate yeah no worries you'll be fine no drums at all but no one asks about their driving experience because you know it's potentially sending someone into a world of hurt if um if they don't really know what they're getting themselves into if they're not used to driving steep country. Uh, Patrick, um, my cousin was doing a trip uh, with his girlfriend and decided to drive down Billy Gates and called me in, on a mobile and asked me what the track was like. There we go. Well, there's uh, that one there. Um, as long as they got down, all right. That's probably the main thing there. Tyler, knowing uh, your limitations before, yeah, absolutely. Knowing your limitations and your vehicle's limitations is absolutely critical. And don't be... Don't be ashamed or afraid to turn around and, and turn around and if it's out of, out of your limitations or out of your comfort zone, turn around and go back and come back another day is 100% the way to go. Far better off getting out there and have a good experience and have one bad experience and then it could end you. You know, you might freak out that badly where you don't want to go back again. So always want to have a good experience. Uh, Billy goats can change within. Yeah, look, Billy goats changes all the time. It certainly does. It can change very, very quickly. Within weeks and months, there's no doubt about that. If you get some weather and, um, you know, a lot of traffic driving over it, Billy Goats changes all the time. And being one of those tracks that's not a seasonally closed track, it's open all year round, it does get a lot of vehicles certainly on it. Um, Jonesy, the difference between uh, an experienced and inexperienced driver is that the inexperienced driver is aware of vehicles' capabilities and picks up lines to suit. Um, yeah, if you experience driver, yeah, absolutely. Look, yeah, you, you know, you know, you, you know what lines to look out for, um, you know, and what what you're looking for on, on the track and, and and where to put the tires and that sort of stuff. Whereas if you're inexperienced, doesn't necessarily look at that. They're just point and shoot, and sometimes point and shoot can get you into a world of trouble. There's no doubt about that, Adam. Um, don't go off road on the high, on highway tires. Yeah, mate, I I always been banging on about highway tires and full driving. Uh I've seen a few people um going full full blowing off road in standard tires. Yeah, anything with ho- highway tire and full driving, Fendingham should not be used in the same sentence. That is for sure, because they just don't have strength in the sidewalls, you know, to handle um the low tire pressures and rocks and terrain and that sort of stuff. So highway tires shouldn't be being used at all, that's for sure. G'day, Ross. How are you going there, mate? Thanks so much there for coming in. Greatly appreciate that. Uh, Benny, smart moves um, mean you will drive it drive it home. That's right. <clears throat> yeah, you always want to drive home and not bring it home on the back of a truck, that's for sure. Uh, Jack in Sydney. Um, started small, went went to, to Lost City. I've not been lost. I've not been up in Lost City. I've seen a few videos. It looks all right. Did the easy tracks and worked up from there. Uh, not going to do Roger Bobs and uh, too rough for me. Well, yeah, well, that's as long as you know. And that's a good thing, mate. If, if it's too hard for you now, well, you know, get a bit more experience and then look at doing those sort of things later down the track. That is for sure. Um, Jazza, um, I'm going hardcore, full drive always. Best best to take a mate, especially if it's remote. Yeah, look, absolutely, you know. If you're not really, really sure on where you're going, yep, go with someone else. And and that's the other thing, you know, these few people that have contacted me direct, you know, a couple of them have been wanting to do it solo and straight away I've always said that, you know, not ideal going to do this by yourself, but in the day, they've got to make the call. All you can do is give them the advice, give them your thoughts and what those sort of things. But at the end of the day, they're the ones that's got to make up um, the decision when they still whether they still go and do it or not. Um, like, you know, there was a, one of my, that blue rag video I did, oh, it was probably about three years ago now. I got, again, a message. Um, a guy actually uh, made a comment on that only today. And his direct comment was, do I need lockers to drive, um, to drive this track? And, so there again, you know, you don't need lockers to drive anywhere in the Victorian country. It depends on what you want to do and the sort of style of full driving you want to go and do. 
Um, but yeah, so you know, his perception is: Do I need lockers to go and drive blue rag? Well, potentially not. So I actually, I said to him, maybe tune into this video tonight. You might get some feedback out of this. Uh, Tyler, remember, momentum is not always the answer to climbing steep hills. Not necessarily, mate. No, there's a fine line between all that. We went through a bit of a topic on momentum uh, a little while ago. And, um, yeah, it was good, good, good chat, that one. West Australia, there you go there, mate. Good to see you on. Uh, times have changed uh, with all those mods and power upgrades. People focus on is on the vehicle rather than the personal capabilities. It's ruined uh, the essence of full driving. And, and it, that may be the case. I mean, a lot with the modern modern sort of full drives with all these traction controls and hill descents and that sort of stuff, maybe people just rely way too much on that to get them through rather than, um, you know, their own capabilities on getting the vehicle through. So, yeah, that's probably an interesting one there with, um, you know, some of this modern-day stuff that's going on. Um, Steve, what do you think is, is the harder... The end, end of Eagle Vale track down uh, the steep bit down to Billy Goats. The, the, uh, that is a good drop off. I've dri driven that many times, the Eagle Vale track where it goes down to, I'm assuming you mean down to Crooked River. Um, or by, both ends of, Eagle, of uh, um, Eagle Vale track are, or, or actually, I'm talking about Cynthia Range. Actually, no. Nah. The drop off here, yeah, Eagle Vale from um, Wombat Range down to Eagle Vale, that's, yeah, it's, it's a good drive down there. It'd be certainly a very different track, mate, if it was wet. Um, yeah, a couple of steep sections there would be very challenging the wet. But other than that, um, I still don't think it's probably as steep as Billy Goat. The thing with Billy Goat, it just goes and goes and goes. And and with the rock section, especially after the helipad, um, you know, it's sort of in two sections, Billy Goat, that first section from the bottom up to helipad. If it was wet, you know, there's a lot of, not a lot of uh, rock and ruts in that sort of section. So it's very, a lot of hard packed clay based stuff. So they've become very, very slippery, especially if it was wet. But from the helipad to, you know, up to the bluff um, where, the where the amazing lookout is, you know, that's a full-on commitment track. Once you start that climb, you're pretty much committed. There's not a great deal of opportunity there to turn around. And, and yeah, it, it's steep and rocky and wombatty holes and all sorts of stuff going on up there. So, yeah, it, it is a very much a commitment track, especially once you pass that helipad getting to the top. Yeah, Mitchell, yeah, peer pressure could be um, certainly one of the issues there. Um, yeah, uh, for all their mates who are doing it, everyone who just wants to follow along, and that's not always a good idea either. So, yeah, you've got to work on that one. Um, travel solo, how you going? Mate? Blue rag is, is doable without, without – absolutely it's doable without lockers. You don't need lockers at all to see any of our country, really, if you don't want to – you don't really need them at all. It just um, – they just help, you know, and just – that, uh, you know, in certain situations and certain terrains and certain weather conditions, yep, yeah, lockers certainly help. But fair income lockers can get you in a lot more trouble with with, that, with them and sometimes without them if you're not used to driving on them. So, yeah, that's for sure. Mr. Buckaroonie, here he is. VB is the worst. Be <laughs> oh, mate, couldn't be any, it couldn't be any worse than 4X. Fair income. V I'd probably rather VB than a 4X, but, hey, I live down here. But not that I drink VB much anyway. Glennie, how you going there, mate? Um, no way uh, anyone has driven Billy Goats more than than you hit <laughs> at me, guys. Yeah, it's probably um, it's probably going to be pretty pretty close, mate. But yeah, it's up there. I've had a few meat pies and I've driven Billy Goats. Yeah, uh, quite a lot of times. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. Um, <clears throat> Steve, yeah, I figured Billy Goats was the harder. Yeah, mate, it would be for sure. Um, as a, over. Um, driving down uh, Eagle Vale. Eagle Vale track's a really nice track from from uh, Wombat down to the bottom. Really, really nice track. Nice drive going down there. Well, last time I drove, it was a good few months ago now, it was in really good nick. It wasn't long after the fire, so not sure what condition it's in at the moment. Um, g'day, Bush Adventures. How are you going there, mate? Um, I, uh, I have a mate, and he's he's just like like you, same type of type hat and same car. Well, he must be all right, bloke. He's got a... <laughs> Got a pretty cool Cooper going and got a Jeep patrol. So good day to your mate there when you when you catch up with him. Don't forget to uh, give give the thumbs up. Cheers, guys. Um, good to see you, mate. Thanks very much there, Gaz, for coming in there tonight. Uh, Greg, Walhalla has tracks that can that can bugger up your day. Look, absolutely, Walhalla is one of those areas that you know is certainly no go zone. I don't think for anyone unless you really know where you're going out there, or make sure if you've not been there before that you go with someone that knows where they're going. Thing with that Walhalla area, um, if you don't know where you're going, it's one of those areas that's not a matter of if, but it's a matter of when you find something that's 
going to be nasty and could potentially be way out of your driving experience or your vehicle's experience. So, yeah, well, hell, it's not a place just to go for a Sunday drive and start exploring because you're going to get yourself way into trouble if you're not up for it. Alex, how are you going there, mate? A lot of the videos, thanks very much. I'm planning a solid trip around Australia. Not, that'd be nice. Not really looking uh, to do anything crazy. Yeah, that's all right. Just go for a trip around Australia. That'd be, uh, that'd be fantastic, mate. But hopefully when you get it going, um, hopefully it goes, goes good for you. Cam, how are you going there, mate? Um, 80 Series doesn't have lockers, and it's been uh, over many steep tracks around the Victorian Night Country. Two-inch lift, two lift is plenty, and there you go. Lockers, as I keep saying, you know, yep, yeah, I'm front rear locked in mine. And more had the lockers in from the for the forward of action days is where where they they, where they they were installed for those crazy years. But um, but yeah, I, I still use the rear pretty much all the time because you know as I've mentioned very many of my videos that once you pull that rear LSD center out and put a locker in, well you're pretty much a single wheeler. So I use that rear locker a fair bit. And only the front when I really, really have to. Bones, how are you going there, mate? How would someone know uh, which direction to travel on unfamiliar tracks and does it really matter? Um, what's that? Someone know in, in which direction to travel? Well, as far as direction goes, you can, you, it doesn't matter whether you're going up or down. But but if, again, if you're driving a track that you don't know, uh, you've really got to try and get as much knowledge as you can on the particular tracks or the areas that you're wanting to go into. I know, look, I know it's really hard. You know, the high countries are fitting. It's a massive area. And, um, you know, to try and um, get an idea on what track conditions and that are like for where you're maybe planning to run a trip. Well, yeah, you just got to try and uh, speak to as many people as you can, but try and get the best of advice too. And, Again, like I keep saying, it's not about your full drive always. It's about what you can do as well. Because even some of the easy tracks can turn to pretty nasty very, very quickly with a bit of rain on them around the high country. Leroy, um, drove snow for the first time winter. Um, took easy. was a great experience with some tips from, yeah, thanks very much. You got some tips out of the vids there, mate. That's greatly appreciated. And look, snow driving's great. I think we're pretty much done and dusted down here for this year. So let's see how we go for next year. Uh, Darren there, oh, where's he gone? He's gone. Um, hi, hi Comb. Comb, how you go, mate? Um, another great topic of, for discussion. Great info. Thank, thanks very much. Greatly appreciate you coming there tonight. Uh, that's top stuff. Uh, Benjamin, do you think a winch isn't, no, is uh, is necessary for the Victorian eye country? Again, a winch, um, you know, I've sort of spoken a little bit about winches, some of my solo stuff, but um, no, a winch, again, is not uh, one of these things that's, Absolute necessity, but if you're going to go out, probably not ideal if you're going to go out a lot on your own and you don't have a winch, I would say, yeah, they are a necessity to have on the front of your vehicle. It's a great piece of insurance to have. You know, you might only use it that once, but that once could just, you know, potentially save your life or someone else's. But if you're going to go out with, with groups of people all the time and, you know, and they've got winches on their vehicle, what it all comes down to, you know, positioning those vehicles within that convoy, within that group that, you know, that you don't put all the winches up the front and all the non-winches down the back. You've got to split them all up and make sure that if someone gets in trouble that doesn't have a winch, you can get a winch on them either from the back or the front, those sort of things. But, no, a winch is not a necess necessity to have. But, again, it comes down to it come down to a lot of things when it comes to winches. You know, what time are you going to go out? What sort of driving are you going to go and do? Um, all that, those sort of things. And if you're going to go out a lot on your own. If you're going to go out on your own, absolutely, I wouldn't be going without it. Um, having a winch on the front, it's a bit like having a another person or another vehicle with you, you know, if you because you know, you it, no point having all your snap straps and that sort of stuff. You're going to travel by your own because what are you going to do with them? They're useless. Uh, you might as well leave them at home. Whereas if you've got a winch on your vehicle, you know, you can always get yourself pretty much out of trouble. So, yeah, I'd have a winch every day of the week if you um, if you're going to look and put one on. Um, don't deliberately do it, no, in bog holes, especially uh, with, well, going away solo. Look, I don't drive bog holes. I, I hate the damn things. I drive them if I have to, but I don't go looking for them, that's for sure. So there you go, Benjamin. I hope that sort of helped you out there. Mel, um, uh, needs a, need an expert opinion. What's your opinion on the Great Wall as a first full drive? I really couldn't tell you a great deal about those, unfortunately, Mel. Um, don't really know. Someone here may be able to give some feedback on the Great Wall. Yeah, I really don't know about those um, those utes at, at all for off-road capabilities. But again, I suppose it's, you know, depend on, you know, with your son's first full drive, um, where you think he might go with it and what it's going to do. You know, you got to look at if he's going to hang on it for a while 
what accessories are available and all that sort of stuff for those sort of vehicles. So maybe have a bit of a look at that too. Um, what accessories are available with aftermarket stuff with lift and tyres and wheels and, you know, bull bars and all that sort of stuff. Make sure you can get all that sort of stuff if you're going to hang on it for a while. Good tyres. Uh, let Yep, that's the go there, mate. There's no doubt about that. Katrina, I drove um, from London to Cape Town. Nice six-month trip. That would be – that sounds awesome. That sounds like a really good trip you've done there, Katrina. Really nice. Uh, Eric, how you going there, mate? Fine weather on the way. Um, yep, hopefully it is dry tracks. Easier easier for the Turac taxis, those uh, those of us with little four-door experience. Um, yeah, just got to yeah, take it easy, mate, and, and look out for the weather. is certainly um, a big, big, um, big – Part of that, that's for sure. Travel solo, love the uh, love the photo of Craig's hut. Thanks, mate. Um, yeah, it's, haven't been up to Craig's for a little while, so looking forward to get back up there when we certainly can. That is for sure. Great spot. I did take all those photos. That one there. Yeah. Well, actually, yeah, I did take those. That's a really nice spot up there. All those spots here at Craig's. Really nice spots. Love Craig's out. Must get back up there at some stage very soon when we sort of can or once the tracks open up anyway because it's all seasonally shut at the minute. Uh, Nags, um, when COVID is over, would you consider doing tag along um, camp to get together? Um, it's really hard to organise those sort of trips. It really is with insurances and all that sort of stuff. Um, I, I did organise a YouTube get together a few years ago and I was going to do one just before COVID hit as well. So we'll just have to wait and we'll see how everything all pans out going forward with this current predicament that we now find ourselves living in. But we'll see what happens down the track, that's for sure. Um, what's the track like uh, on the way up to the Murray and Murrumbidgee uh, River Track Junction? Um, yep, yeah, um, Jim. The first spot that I stayed on was no worries getting in there. But, again, when I say no worries getting in there, again, if it was wet, like it was pretty – it rained a few days before we went on those, those Murray River trips. And the first first one wasn't too bad. It would be pretty greasy. You wouldn't want to pull a caravan in there. During summertime, if it's nice and dry, you'd get probably get a van in there, no worries. It's not far off the main highway there, the Murray Valley Highway, to get into the Murray River from there. But that's the second spot where I camped opposite the Mur Murrumbidgee. That's a long way in. And you're going to need some decent sort of navigation to get you in there. Um, uh, that's the other thing too, because it's a bit of a rabbit warren when you go in. Um, but you're probably about uh, five, six k's in off the main road there. And again, same deal as as long as it's dry, you drive in and out of there, pretty easy. Yeah, nothing, nothing too challenging at all. Um, well, actually, nothing challenging as long as it's dry. But if it's wet, it can get very, very different in there with clay and come very, very slippery. So just got to be very careful in those sort of conditions, that's for sure. Uh, Dirt Road saying, um, saying cash to get uh, rear locker on the GU, saving the cash to get a rear locker on the GU, um, just so it's when when it's needed, um, like a winch. Uh, we'll use my ability as always. Look, if, you only, if you're looking at lockers, mate, we've had this talk too about putting lockers in, especially when it comes to the GU because the rear end on the GU with the LSD in them is pretty much as good as you're going to get. If you're only looking at doing one, I'd highly recommend only putting a front one in for now and just leaving the rear end as it is. That's just my my tip on it. Um, uh, yeah, I'd do the front and just leave the rear. And if you want to give front and rears later on down the track, then chuck a back one in, but just do the front, I reckon. But anyway, ask other people and we'll see what they think. Their dirt road, but um, yeah, just put the front in, mate. Graham, uh, shopping centres and uh, back uh, ne never winch, never winches once. Yep, you probably won't use them in shopping centres at all, mate. That's for sure. Uh, Daniel, uh, I have the same rims on patrol as yours. Yeah, tried your tyres shine. Tips looks looks Mickey Mouse. Do you ever use it um, on the on the bull bar? Yeah, I do use tyre shine sometimes there on the bull bar. That works really well on that and um, other places as well. And actually, tomorrow night's video is um, how I go about cleaning under the bonnet. And there's a bit of tie shine involved in that too. So maybe check that one out tomorrow night too. Uh, tomorrow, yeah, tomorrow night, Monday night, five o'clock it'll go up. Um, who are we going there now? Um, Ryan, yeah, good good on you, mate. Uh, rear rear or front locker? Yep, we just sort of bit of spoke about that. I'll just put a front one in. If you're only looking to do one, just chuck the front in and but get some other advice on that. That's just my tip. Len, uh, he's talk, he talking there. Um, Steve, what's the most uh, underrated spots, most underrated spots in the high country. Jeez, there's, there's stacks of those. Well, one I keep talking about is uh, Mount Buffalo. I reckon it's one of the most underrated mountains in the whole of Victorian high country. Not a great deal of full driving we do on a Mount Buffalo, but Fenningham, 
the views and the walks and the and the waterfalls in Mount Buffalo feeding them are some of the best you'll see anywhere in the country. So Mount Buffalo is a big one. Go and check that out when you can, when you need to travel again. Um, Jim there, would a novice driver be able to do Mansfield, Telephone Box Junction, Bindaroo, Track to the Falls, Bluff Hut, Lovex, and end up in La Cola, Tamworth Road? Um, again, yeah, uh, all very easy, but... Uh, if it rains, you know, it's some of those easy, easy tracks, especially Telephone Box Junction, uh, Bindaree Track to the Falls is, um, you know, it's all very, very easy driving roads. But uh, if it's wet, mate, it'll, they'll change very, very quickly and uh, maybe don't take on 16-mile trip track to get yourself up to a bluff track. Um, so there's another one there you want to think of. But, yeah, the Bluff Hut, Lovex Hut, all the way through there. Yeah, nothing overly challenging at all. Um, and Howard Hut all the way through there. From how from Bluff Hut or Lovex Hut all the way through to Howard Hut, it's not that hard to drive. It's just slow going. A lot of rocky, when I say rocky, you know, sort of basketball sort of size, sort of rocks all the way, a lot, a lot of the way through there. So it's just slow going. It's certainly not hard, not steep at all. So really, really nice drive to go through there. When the tracks open up later on this year, you can get yourself through there. Uh, Luca, you've patched your, your – <laughs> yeah. I thought I'd put a sticker on. Everyone keeps commenting about my uh, my bit of uh, my um, the patch up there on the where the paint pulled off off the plaster up there. So I put a sticker on it instead. Yeah, high country. Um, I agree with the diff lock in the front of the GU. Yeah, absolutely. When it comes to the GU, the rear end of those is um, yeah, is nearly as good as you're going to get when it comes to the uh, LSD in those top notch they are. So just do the front if you're looking to do just one end. Uh, travel solo. What uh, what trips have you got planned for the near future? Any more? Yep, yeah, I want to get up to Murray River again. I've got a, I'm actually looking at a, I bought a few maps to go further up there in that Murray River area. So, yeah, Murray River will be um, certainly in the pipeline. Murray Sunset National Park, all those sort of areas, and beyond. So we just got to wait and see how it all goes with travel with going forward. Uh, Mark. Uh, if you do catch your land, uh, said she, she'd be cooking. Oh, she's going to be cooking, is she? Right, oh, we'll see about that. Uh, Morty, uh, going to Dargo next weekend. Obviously, you're living in regional. Um, have <laughs> reasonable four-wheel drive experience. Usually camp up along the uh, upper Dargo Road. Recommend some tracks. 90, uh, 90 series, pretty um, pretty stock, um, aside from the muddies. Um yeah, again, this all really comes down to that topic we're, we're talking about, you know, with reasonable full drive experience. So, again, comes down to probably the weather. But um, anywhere along there, you know, you can get yourself down in Talbotville, do Conwood Spur and, um, you know, down on Crooked River Track, um, Bull Town, all the way down through there, really, really nice drive. Um, Randalls and Conway, there's some, some really good tracks there if you're up for some steep stuff. But just have to play it a bit by, by ear on the weather and also what the uh, rivers are like because I was talking to someone only just the, uh, a couple of days ago and still the rivers around that Dargo area are up really high. So whether they're going to drop in the next week um, will be just have to, have to be remain to be seen. But nice area camping out there along that upper Dargo Road. Once you get out past Dalian Flat, really, really nice spot. So hopefully it's a good weekend out, out there for you, mate, when you head out. Uh, Luca? Uh, testing, testing, I'm coming through, sending messages, but not, not being seen. Sorry, mate, if I've missed a few of yours, uh, messages there, mate. I'm um, trying to catch up with everyone, but, yeah, they're all flowing through pretty hard. Jordy, how you going, mate? Uh, thanks so much, Mr. Buckaroony. Yeah, mate, for <laughs> pulling Toyotas out, they are not. What a winch is. That's about all they're good for. Um, Bush, uh, Bush Adventures, rooftop maps, um, says Dedic track is, is quite good. It's a quite steep track too. I think there's a couple of um, steep sections in that, but that's over Snow Riverside. That's one track I'm yet to do. So I've got a certainly trip planned from there through from um, um, Calips Bridge all the way through to Tom Grogan, which is another trip I want to do later on once we can uh, get travelling, once the gates open up. Glenn, I uh, can't believe you you took the patrol LSD out of the rear. Well, the only reason why I did take the, the rear out is because um, – Back then, I'm going back probably oh, 10 years ago, just before when I was just starting out with forward of action. Uh, the advice for me was to, at that time, from a guy who was doing a fair bit of work on mob troll then, was to shim up the rear diff, you know, to make the rear diff tighter. Um, and I thought, oh, yeah, no worries. You know what you're on about. That sounds good. Let's do that. At the end of the day, it ended up destroying the rear diff. It shimmed up way too tight. 
um, going around corners. It was skipping, it was going around corners, and in the end, it ended up destroying the rear diff, and it destroyed the rear diff centre on that first one, that, that first episode of I was on with forward of action. So I had to race home in between episode one and episode two of starting that Walhalla series, the Walhalla episode. Had to race home and get a, and a rear LSD, a rear um, diff locker put in. And that's why I've got front and rears put in because I always had the front and then the rear went in because of that, because the yeah, worst modification I've ever had um, advised for me to do is shim up the rear end. It just stuffed the rear diff and that's why it's got a rear locker in it for that one and only reason. So there you go, Mount Buck, man, Mr. Bucky's. I walked up Mount Buffalo in 983 with a friggin' uh, water knapsack. And um, 983, mate, that would have been pretty amazing to see it, see it, um, Mount Buffalo way back then. But it is a cracking mountain. What were you doing down here in 983, mate? I don't know. That's uh, good to see you down here then. Phil, do you reckon all the tracks will be open come Melbourne Cup weekend? You know, I, I reckon, um, I reckon there could be a, a few extended long extended track closures i'm only just guessing out loud at the moment because of the massive rains that happened sort of a few months ago like massive rains especially through that lacola and dargo area lacola got absolutely smashed with big rains um it's probably going to be sort of um sort of late september october before parks can get down and maybe assess some of these really badly damaged areas um, like you look, you look at Caledonia River Track and McAllister River Track, you know, there's you know 10 or 15 crossings along some of those tracks and really, really close together. And I'd hate to think what the damage is going to be on those two tracks just in particular. And so, you know, there, there could be some long extended closures. I think we're just going to have to wait and see, I reckon, um, to see um, what happens once Parks Vic actually get down and, and assess these areas to what the condition of the uh, river crossings are like with entries and exits. So we're going to have to wait and see on that one, I reckon, Phil. Um, but we've got a little while to go yet and see see, we'll see what happens with it all. Um, Mitchell there, um, what's your favourite track to drive around Dargo when uh, seasonal closures are in place? When seasonal closures in place, uh, you know, outside you, you um Billy Goat, but you can't go past um, Randalls and Conway. They are cracking tracks to drive, really, really good tracks to drive. I like to go up up, the, up um, Randalls and down Conway or even go the other way, even coming up Conway if, if you're up for some steep stuff. That, that second section, up section on Conway, uh, going up from the bridge, is a cracking track. So they're there too, probably. Um, Collingwood's another good drive too, but they're certainly up there when um, seasonal track closure on Randago. Conway and Randall have a crack at them. Bloody good, good couple of steep tracks, that's for sure. Um, city gone bad, so mate, um, a tough keep, uh, keep up the bush, bush cooking. Thanks very much. Yeah, got a few more of those in plan going forward. Let's we'll see what happens with all that. West Australian, uh, they are great episodes that uh, that I still watch today. I catch up with Graham every oh, yeah, Graham every now and then. Look, I um. They, they were great years, mate, the action years. I've still got all the DVDs out in my shed, which I uh, occasionally watch every now and then, go back and reminisce about some of the old ones. But, yeah, like, they, they were good years, and um, it'll be good to do it once the full drive shows and they get rolling again because that's generally about the only time I get to catch up with Graham and Sean and all that crew from, from Action Day. So, yeah, it'll be good to um, good to see all those fellas, that's for sure. Archie, um, shout out to shout out to the biggest fan of, of the high country, Pete. He does not miss a video. <laughs> he does nothing but watch watch your camera videos. G'day, Pete. Thanks so much, guys. There dropping in there tonight. Hopefully, you're having a good one and keep enjoying those videos because there's plenty more coming. <laughs> good on you, Pete. Thanks so much, mate. Catch you a bit later on down the track. Uh, Eric Flemington, Flemington track. Those horses, yeah, Flemington track. Yeah, we're not going to go and do any tracks around there. Yeah, Randall's is a good one. It is a cracker. Um, I'm on the water, mate. Yeah, I'm on the water. Don't worry about it. There's only water in this stuff, that's for sure. I might have had a couple earlier on this afternoon when I was working out my shed. You should wait to see me shed what I'm doing out there. It's going to look amazing down the track. Can't show you right now, though. Um, did you, uh, did you have, um, have hair back in your forehead? Oh, I've still got hair now, mate. What are you talking about? I still get a, I still get a haircut every couple of months. So, you know, I still, I still, I still got a bit of hair going on there. Don't worry, worry, worry about that. Travel solo, how are you going there, mate? Um, you should write a book, uh, Camp Cooking and um, and mud, mud Maps for some of the great Victorian drives and epic campsites. Yeah, look, I've had a few people sort of just about books, but I just sort of 
instead of doing a book, I like just put it in video format. You know, they're always there. And, uh, yeah, you check out some of the bush cooking and certainly the tracks through video format. It uh, works out really good, I reckon. Jazz of sticker is a, is a good idea <laughs> for patching the wall. Yeah, look, it's it's certainly um, filled a spot up there, that's for sure. No doubt about that. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Bucker, uh, actually st still has hair, yeah, mate. I think I've got maybe a bit more than what maybe Mr. Bucks at Buckaroonie's got up there, but um, just enough probably. Uh, Mr. Bullet, um, it's bad enough uh, washing in water alone, let drink, drinking it. Come on, it's wood is good for you. I, I like the stuff, it goes down all right. Uh, Daniel, uh, got to run, take care. Look, I've got to run too, I reckon. I think we might wrap this one up, but but look, I hope that's um. I hope it's been a little bit of an interesting chatty tonight because, you know, like I said, you know, this topic comes around, well, not not topic, these questions roll around social media all the time, you know. This is my full drive. Can I drive these tracks? And no one ever asks for the driving experience. So it is good. So, But anyway, it's good they're asking and it's not about the full drive. It's not just about the driver. It's about both. It's about the driver, knowing the full drive's capabilities and what you both can do. So there you go, guys. Thanks very much for coming in tonight. Greatly appreciate all your feedback there. Rip and nighty tonight. You have a good one. Stay safe for the next week and we'll catch you on the next one. Everybody, guys, thanks very much. Catch you later on. Jamie, thanks, guys. Alex and Eric, and good on you guys traveling solo. Greatly appreciate you coming in tonight. Peter, Nags, and all those guys. Good on you. Everybody. Ended in a minute. There we go. <laughs>